Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the next episode in our series, The Choral Alphabet. And this week, it is J for Joplin, as in Scott Joplin, the great American composer, whose music really, in many ways, defined many, many vital musical sections of the 20th century. He is, to my mind, one of the most important composers of the 20th century. I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about him and his masterpiece, the opera Trimonisha, as we learn the octet from the end of the opera called Wrong is Never Right. I do hope everyone's having a good day out there today. Uh, busy here, because obviously we're preparing not just for Home Choir's regular shows, but of course for Zadok the Priest, which is going to take place here in Bristol on May the 1st, conducted by myself with a now confirmed well over 650 people attending in person to sing and more in the audience and many, many more yourselves, I hope, included watching the live stream. So it's all a bit, uh, it's all gone a bit handily here. <laughs> and of course, with Choir of the Earth uh, preparing their Hallelujah, uh, which is going to go out on May the 5th. Uh, there's going to be quite a lot of handle floating around next week as we run up to the coronation. But today it's all about Mr Joplin. And so do allow me a moment to just check that everything's working here. If you're not familiar with the name Scott Joplin, I mean, you will be familiar... <laughs> style known as ragtime and pieces like uh, the maple leaf rag and others he also wrote operas as you're about to find out uh, so let me just check that the various tracks are working today let's just have a little bit of the opening of this now this is all sung by me including the very high soprano part so it's a little bit of the chipmunk uh, formation squad going on but it'll be fine i think i think we'll uh, we'll allow it Lovely. It's a really nice piece. It's not very long. It is in eight parts. So all our rehearsals are going to be really short in order to fit it all within the half hour, but I think we'll manage. And I've already chosen next week's uh, Choral Alphabet piece. I shall tell you more about it in a minute. Could not be any more different to this, but that's the point, isn't it? To put together a library of pieces, many of which you'll never have heard of, many composers you may never have heard of, but in the end you will have a library of 26 pieces that will, uh, will cover the broad range of the choral repertoire. I also need to check that the acoustic's working. It is. I've got a little treat for you as well. I've spent a lot of this morning working on Zadok the Priest, but also recording our piece for Friday. Do you want to hear a little bit of The Lion Sleeps tonight? Just a little bit. Here we go. Oh, I had some fun with this one. So I've been whim away all morning, everyone. Join me on Friday for the Lion Sleeps tonight, OK? Make sure you bring your whims and your ways, because you need both of them. Uh, good. So how is everyone doing out there? Marvellous. Let me just... Well, let me pop out my list, and whilst I'm doing that, I will welcome everyone who's watching this broadcast later on. Thank you so much for being part of Home Choir. We're very, very close to 3,600 subs, so if you are watching and you haven't hit that red button that says subscribe, why not make today the day? Why not push us over the edge of 3,600? We're heading towards 4,000, and who knows, with everything that's got coming up over the next few weeks with Zadok and Celebration Day and more besides, we might hit that target sooner than we think, but if you haven't hit that button, make today the day, if you would. Don't forget the thumbs up, everyone, and if you want to be notified when we go live, then hit the little bell notification icon as well. All of this is completely free. We'd just love to uh, have you on board. So welcome to everyone who is watching live today but isn't in the live chat. A very special hello and thank you to Helene and Bill and Val in California because this piece, well, this I, I know about this piece mainly because Helene uh, sent me a score and this gorgeous book, uh, which I have read to my children. This is a children's book adaptation of the opera. It is by Angela Shelf Mediaris, and it is an absolutely brilliant, brilliant book. Um, beautiful illustrations. It summarises the opera brilliantly. 
And at the back, there is a really fascinating afterword, which I will read a little bit of to you, because it really does kind of highlight the, the, the wonderful life that uh, Joplin had to a point and then the rather tragic end he had before his music was uh, was rediscovered and revitalised by, uh, by that, <laughs> that film, The Sting, in the 1970s. It really is amazing how sometimes all it takes is a spark uh, for something to really take off. Now, let me welcome everyone who's watching live today and chatting away. Hello, Atty. Hello, Alison. Hello, Angela. Hello, Carol. Hello, Carolyn. Hello, Christine. And hi to Terry as well. Hello, Dave. Hello, Jill. Hello, Dorothy. Hello, Emma. Hello, Fiona. Hello, Frida. Hello, Gaynor. Hello, Glennis. Hello, Gloria. Hello, Anna. Hello, Irina. Hello, Jackie. Hello, Kareth. Hello, Kim. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Lorraine. Hello, Mike. Hello, Nicola. Hello, Nikki watching later on. Hello, Patricia. Hello, Sheila. Hello, Sean, hello, Soraya. Hello, Susanna. I hope you've landed safely in Cork. Cork, as I should say. Uh, uh, hello, Soraya. Hello, Terry. Hello, Virginia. Hello, everyone. I do hope you're having a good day. Uh, this, Honestly, all this lovely music puts a great big smile on my face. And just to say, next week's Choral Alphabet, I, I've already said, could not be more different in terms of style. It will be a longer episode, folks. Just bear in mind, some of these pieces, I, most of the pieces I choose to try and keep within the confines of the half hour. But every now and then, every now and then, a piece comes across my desk and I kind of think... <sighs> Let's do an extended edition because it's going to be a little bit longer. But oh, my goodness me. Next week's uh, episode has one of the most beautiful pieces that we have shared ever on this channel. If you're a fan of uh, Crucifixus by Lottie, you will love next week's Choral Alphabet. And I'll be amazed if anyone's heard of the piece, which I shall be announcing very shortly. But after this broadcast, I shall be encouraging you all to go away and look not just at the opera tree, Monisha, which is the focus of today's Crawl Alphabet, but at this piece that I'm going to tell you about in a minute. So, as a glance, I see we've also been joined by Guy and Andrea. Hello, folks. Good to see you. Hello, Stuart. Good to have you with us as well. Wonderful. Hello, Linda. Hello, Christine. Good to see you as well. Oh, Suzanne's about to get on the gate to, to Cork from Amsterdam. Have a safe flight. Wonderful stuff. Hello, Rose, who's in the Philippines listening. Hello, Rose. Thank you for joining us. I do hope you enjoy this music today. A little bit of uh, opera by the King of Ragtime. Who knew? So, folks, we need to crack on as we've got eight parts to learn today, albeit quite short. And uh, so if you please make sure you've got everything you need for our broadcast. I would suggest a drink to stay hydrated. The score will be on screen, but as it's eight parts, it's going to be a little bit squashed. So the score is in the description, a link to the full vocal score. You don't need the whole thing. You just need pages 174 to 178, and you can follow along. Of course, the whole score is there for you to enjoy. The opera itself is a masterpiece, and I'll tell you more about it in just a moment. But first of all, we need to start the show. And at sing in F major, which is one of Scott Joplin's favourite keys, and I'm going to add in an extra couple of Joplin-esque notes as we sing Home Choir and start the show. Okay, here we go. Nice deep breath and. Uh... Oh. That'll be a nice warm sixth to add to our core today and welcome all of you to the most up-to-date episode of the Choral Alphabet. This is our show that we've put together. Well, really to provide a, a different take on the choral repertoire. I'm sure those of you that are experienced singers or even new to sing will notice that we quite often end up singing the same pieces and the same composers. Well, this is to try and take all of us, myself included, out of our, uh, our familiarity zone, not even the comfort zone, the familiarity zone, and into some new areas. So today we're going to sing an opera chorus by Scott Joplin, the king of ragtime, one of the most important and influential composers of the 20th century. And this is the octet from the end of his opera, Trimonisha, which is an absolute masterpiece. Now, before I tell you more about it, let's look at what we've got coming up on Home Choir, because it is a very, very busy week. On Friday, we will be learning The Lion Sleeps Tonight, 
fabulous song, which I'm sure is familiar to most of you. Uh, so get your whims and your ways ready because you need to bring both and have lots of fun with me on Fun Friday. Then Friday evening, 6 p.m. UK time, we have the soprano rehearsal for our Zadok the Priest project, which is going to be at St. George's Bristol, uh, oh, sorry, and Bristol Cathedral, of course, on Monday. It's actually at both venues. And then the alto rehearsal will be at 7.15 p.m. Both of those are here on Home Choir. Do please come along. Even if you're not able to attend in person, you will be able to watch the live stream and it will just be great to have as much support as possible from my regular home choir members to support everyone who's coming along for the first time. Hopefully, might persuade them to subscribe. Then on Saturday, we're going to have the tenors and basses. So again, that is 6pm on Saturday and 7.15pm on Saturday evening. Okay, so all the details are on your newsletter. More on that in a minute. Sunday is all handle. I just thought, well, as the coronation is very, very... Very, very, uh, very soon. We need to have Zadok. We need to have Let Thy Hand Be Strengthened. Hallelujah. So it's an all handle program on Sunday. Make sure you bring along a nice big smile and maybe warm your voices up a little bit before we see you. And then on Wednesday, this gorgeous piece, it's called Tristis Est Anima Mea. It is by the German composer Kunal and it is glorious absolutely beautiful music i thoroughly recommend after this broadcast after you've had a chance to listen to uh, at least some of tree manisha go and have a listen to this piece by kunal i'll be teaching it next week in an extended episode so as i've just been saying zadot the priest is may the first this coming monday this means there won't be a home choir folk monday but there will be a live stream in fact there'll be two live streams one will be from st george's which will be an official stream with hopefully lots of nice camera angles and then i'm going to be asking anna and katie to stream from where they are in the cathedral so you'll get a kind of on the ground view uh with our our marvelous technology here the camera on a stick <laughs> and we have permission to do this by the way uh so we will be streaming on the home choir channel there'll be two options for you to watch along and sing zadok the priest with me now do please make sure you've signed up for the newsletter it's where we put all of the important information scores links everything you need in order to sing along with us on home choir it is free we promise to never spam you or use your data for anything other than to send you that key information so go to homechoir.org click newsletter sign up fill in the form and you're done and don't forget to tell us when your birthday is as i love singing happy birthday to people and today we're going to sing happy birthday in a moment to jane and to sylvia both of whom are celebrating their birthdays today before that though let's warm our voices up shall we everyone Take a few deep breaths in and out, just in your own time. This is a really, really lovely octet with a really wholesome, worthwhile message. So I think we're all going to have fun today. Uh, and as we're taking deep breaths in, I'm just going to glance at the comments and I see we've been joined by yet more lovely people. Hello, Jill. Hello, Lisa. Uh, hello to all of you. Who else has joined us in the last few minutes? All right, Jen, good to see you as well. And Marie and everyone who's popped up in the last few minutes. Good to have you with us. It's Diane as well. Splendid. All right. So we've rolled. Let's roll our shoulders round a little bit and roll them back the other way. And then up to your ears. Deep breath. Breathe out and sigh. <sighs> Just roll the head around a little bit. Stretch the muscles out. Splendid. Thank you very much indeed. So we're in the key of D major today. So we'll start here and we're just going to gently hum up and down the broken chord with me and... everyone and as i was saying we have two birthdays today jane and sylvia are celebrating their special day and we want to wish them a very happy birthday so there is our notes and let's sing for them after two. Oh, one, two. happy birthday to you happy birthday Happy 
two returns of the day to both of you. Now then, let's crack on with our programme today because we're going to be exploring the music of this absolute genius. And uh, just before I tell you about him, obviously I think we're all familiar with Scott Joplin's music. He is known as the king of ragtime. And a little personal note, I grew up listening to my mum playing The Entertainer uh, and other bits of Joplin on the piano. I was born in 1970 <laughs> something and uh, I grew up surrounded by ragtime because of course the film The Sting came out in the 70s and Joshua, Joshua Rifkin's incredible recording of uh, Joplin's piano music also came out around that time so it was very popular and it was kind of the soundtrack to my childhood. But what many people won't know is a bit more about Scott Joplin. So he was born in 1868. He is known as the King of Ragtime because he pioneered this form of music that has this, what we call a stride bass. This left hand goes boom cha boom cha boom cha cha And it was, a, it was a technique that he invented bringing together the classical style in which he was trained with the uh, African and the blues rhythms that he grew up with. So it was a combination, a fusion, if you like, of these key musical styles. And uh, many of his pieces became hugely popular during his lifetime, particularly The Entertainer and The Maple Leaf Rag. But what you might not know is that he also wrote operas. Very sadly, his first opera is lost because it was uh, it was taken from him. It was confiscated for non-payment of debts. Uh, and we understand from uh, research that actually it wasn't that he wasn't paying his debts. He had been robbed. Uh, and as a result, this opera score was taken from him and we no longer have it. But his second opera, Tremonisha, uh, we do have. Now, Although Joplin did have a successful career as a composer of piano music, his operas really did not take off. And unfortunately, Trimonisha was one of the reasons why he fell into decline in his 40s. He worked really hard on this wonderful, wonderful piece, which I'll tell you about in a second. And he put everything into the premiere, which took place in 1915. However... He didn't have the money to put on a, a full production with costumes and sets or an orchestra, so it's performed for the first time in front of a very small audience with Joplin playing all of the parts on the piano. And the response was moderately positive, but it got virtually no media attention. And unfortunately, this caused Joplin to fall into quite a severe depression. He was also suffering, I'm afraid, as many composers and many people at the time were, from syphilis. Uh, and so as his health deteriorated, so did his mental state. And he ended up in an asylum. Uh, and the point was he wasn't able to recognise his friends and family. And he died tragically at the age of 48. Now, happily, though, uh, his music was, as I say, rediscovered in the 1970s, largely due to Joshua Rifkin's multi-million selling album uh, of piano music and The Sting, particularly featuring The Entertainer, which is now, I mean, so popular. It's a ringtone, apart from anything else. And so Tree Manisha was finally produced in full with costumes and sets in 1972 and was part of the reason why Joplin was posthumously awarded a Pulitzer Prize in 1976. So unfortunately for Joplin, he had a life cut short by ill health and by an unappreciative public, but he always said it would be 50 years before people fully appreciated his music. And he was absolutely bang on the money. Now, we are really, really pleased to present to you today this octet, this chorus from Tree Manisha. Now, we're going to actually do things backwards to what we'd normally do. We'd normally start with the sopranos and then we would work our way through to the basses. We're actually going to start with the second basses and build up. Now, you can see I've got the score here on screen. It's a little bit on the small side, particularly for not watching me on a great big uh, cinema screen. So I would recommend use the PDF that's in the description. Uh, you need page 174 of the score. And let's crack on, shall we? Uh, now, what I'll do before we, uh, before we learn the individual lines, I'll play it to you. It's not very long, and it is rather lovely. So this is what it sounds like, all recorded by uh, the opera chorus of Patchway Cathedral if there is such a thing, and this is what it sounds like.
short and sweet, with a really important message. Wrong is never right. Uh, so let's have a look at this, shall we, bases? We're going to start with second base, which is the line here. They've got the piano reduction at the bottom and second base here. So it goes like this, chaps. It's one, two, three. Wrong is never right. Okay, listen to these pitches again. Two, three, two, three. I know that sounds a bit jumpy, but it's all just notes of the D major arpeggio. Never right. So with me, please, seconds. One, two, three. You wrong is never right. Good. Then we go on. We sing. Do right, right, do. So it is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. With me, please, seconds. One, two, three, do right, right, do. Then we go down to the A again. We sing wrong is never right. Same as at the start, though. This time, start that a little quieter and crescendo, get louder through right. And the last phrase is do right and happy you will be. Now, in my performance of this, I haven't paused too much on the, uh, the, the second note of happy, but I have paused on you will be. So just be ready for that. Let's go back and sing from do right here. After three, one, two, three, do right and happy you will be. Fabulous. Let's sing it through. Second bass louder. And then we'll have a look at first bass, which is very, very similar. As you can see, folks, it's not going to take us too long to learn this and uh, sing as many parts as you like. Sing as many as you can. So here we go, basses from the top. And... Wrong is never right. Right, right, do. Wrong is never right. Do right and happy. Perfect cadence, five, one, there we go, fabulous, okay, so then let's go back and have a look at the first bass, and a lot of this is the same, and you'll find this as we go up uh, through the parts, a lot of it is repeated, okay, so uh, first bass is you actually sing a very similar line here, except in the first bar, instead of holding the A, we sing, wrong is never identical apart from that first bar which does this so let's sing that together please first basses so one two three wrong is never right good then over the page to the next system again almost identical the first three bars of this next section are the same as second bass and just in the fourth bar we climb the arpeggio so we sing do Right, right, do. So climbing at the end. Sing with me, please, first. So one, two, three, do. Right, right, do. Fabulous. Now, as before, it's exactly the same as the first phrase. Wrong is never. Just as, as at the start, that first bar different from the second bass, otherwise in unison. And then we sing, Do right and happy you will be. So exactly the same there as the second bass is. So should we go back to the top and have a look at this? So this will be a first bass sing through. 
Not the hardest piece we've ever done here on the channel, but as I say, very, very wholesome with a really important message. And that's the thing about True Manisha. It is in many ways, uh, it's, it's, it's autobiographical. And it's well worth having a look at it. Uh, and it is so important because it's very much about empowering the African-American community in America, which at the time needed that support, needed that help, needed that empowerment. OK. OK, we ready. First bases. Here's your introduction. Deep breath. Thanks so much, basses. So let's move on. We are working our way up from the lowest parts to the highest, so second tenors. Now, earlier on, when we sang uh, our home choir chord, I added some extra notes in, and this uh, tenor line leans on a lot of really nice added notes to a chord. So when you play a normal chord, it's usually the first degree of the scale, the third and the fifth to form a triad. But you can add extra notes in, and Joplin and many of these composers work this out. If you add the sixth degree, you get that, which is a slightly shinier version. If you add the ninth, as we're about to, it keeps gives you that shape. So second ten, you're getting all of the uh, all of the jam in this particular cake. So we sing second tenors. It's one, two, three. Wrong is never right. That is very true. I know it's only two pitches, but they are so so important. Okay, so with me, please. Second tenors. One, two, three. Wrong is never right. That is very Good crescendoing through this line, making sure everyone hears these nice notes. And then, nice and simple, this next bit. Wrong, never do. So a nice long A there on wrong for two bars, and then never do at the end of the phrase. Sing with me, please, second tenors from wrong. A two, three. Wrong. And then back to a piano. Wrong is never right. You will agree with me. Now the pitches are the same, but of course the words are different. Wrong is never right. You will agree with me. And we're going to crescendo through that last bit. Sing it with me, please. First tenors. Oh, sorry, second tenors. One, two, three. Wrong is never right. You will agree. Good, and then the last phrase. Do right and happy you will be. Really nice, simple line at the end from do right, two, three, two. Isn't this just such a lovely, lovely piece? So from the top, we've got basses there and tenors. Now, thinking, how do we get that note? Well, the accompaniment gives you this. And then we sing. Wrong is never. Okay, now let me just get the second tenor part to the middle and louder. Let's put the first basses over there. Marvellous. So here we go, everyone. This is the second tenor sing through. Deep breath. And. Wrong is never.
done, everyone. Let's go back to the top. By the way, for those who are waiting. There we are. So let's look now at first tenor, nearly halfway through. So we've got the basses here. We've got the second tenors here. And first tenors are there, creating that lovely ninth chord. So when you get this introduction, just think one higher than that. It's as simple as that, holding the do for two bars and then moving up something to two right. So we try that please, first tenors are one, two, three. Lovely crescendoing through it. We then sing. So starting on the C sharp, getting quieter towards the end of the phrase. Sing with me, please. First tenors, one, two, three. Fabulous. Back to the C sharp to sing. crescendoing that is the same as at the start now a bit of chromaticism an important note in this chord we sing do right and happy you will be so just listen to that again this of course is the first tenor part here fifth line down from the top and we're going from the second to last bar here which is a d sharp a vital note in that texture one two three simple as that a beautiful line though you've got to have some simple lines in amongst all the ones that are jumping around to create the interesting sound and texture so back to the top so we've got basses here we've got second tenors and we've got first tenor here which is going to be the main sing through all right so nice deep breath everyone here's your introduction deep breath <sighs> Uh, now let's go uh, back to the beginning. Let's look at second alto because we are building this up from the lowest to the highest part. So there's the tenors. So altos here, both together actually, first and alto. So second alto we sing. Okay, two bar phrases for each. Just watch the crescendo at the end. And that is both first and second alto. So let's give that a go, please, altos. One, two, three. Right. Crescendoing to the next phrase now. We go up to an A. So we've just sung a G and an F sharp. We need to think up to the A here. And second alto sings. Wrong is never and wrong never do. Listen to those pitches. Okay, after three, please. A one, two, three. Wrong is never right and wrong never do. Lovely. And then, same as at the beginning. with the crescendo, and then we've got to leap up a tritone. Right, right, and happy you will be. Now that C is a little bit unexpected, but in the middle of the, of the chord, it's a really nice moment. 
Just sing that for me, please. Altos, one, two, three. Tonight. And then down by semitone. And happy Let's give the second alto part a sing through, and then the first alto is not much different. I think there is literally just a bar or two that is uh, a contrast. So back to the top. So we've got basses here, second tenor, first tenor, and alto two. That's our sing through. Nice deep breath, everyone. Here's your intro. And. Let's just have a quick look at the alto one part. And as you can see here, the very first phrase tonight, is the same. Now, over onto the next system, It's this is the bit that is different here. We come in on the same note as the second alto. First, we sing And that is literally the only difference between the two parts. So alto one with me, one, two, three. To the end is the same. So let's sing the alto one part all the way through. Okay, pop you in the middle there. Let's put alto two over there. Okay, so from the top, everyone, alto one. And then we've got something completely different for the sopranos. I hope you're feeling, uh, particularly first sopranos, hope you brought your high notes today because you're going to need them. Here we go, everyone. So basses, second tenor, first tenor. Alto one and two. Here we go. And. resist. So let's have a look at the soprano lines and uh, you can see the rest of the chorus is singing these fairly static lines but you've got these two sopranos singing together kind of bouncing off the main texture uh, and as we just have a quick glance through you can see they are pretty much locked together in terms of timing so what I'd like to do is just to count you through and clap along with the rhythm because once you get that right the notes uh, will will uh, will fit in around it so when everyone else sings wrong we get one two wrong is never right one, two that is very true wrong is never right and wrong you should not do one two wrong is never right one to you will agree with me wrong is never right and it will never be now there's only one bit in there i thought that would be uh, even moderately challenging here in terms of the rhythm and it's this just tiny tiny little bit of syncopation and those of you that know joplin know syncopation is at the key is at the heart of his music and he's just put here one to you will agree with me. Just to emphasize the will there. Just say that with him. It's the second bar here on screen. One, two, you will agree with me. It's just a nice little touch, a little nod there to Joplin's day job, if you like. So let's look here at the second soprano line. So we get this chord underneath. So we get one, two, one, two. So lots of 
lots and lots of arpeggios here. So it's one, two, roar is never right. Sing that for me, second stops. One, two, roar is never right. Good, then we think up a semitone. One, two, that is very true. Listen again. One, two, that is very true. Then you need to grab a breath very quickly. You've only got half a beat before the next phrase we sing. Wrong is never right and wrong you should not do. Listen again. Isn't it lovely? Sing with me, please. Second soprano. So one, two, three. Wrong is never right and wrong you should not do. Fabulous. Now, repeat of the opening. Wrong. Excuse me. One, two. Wrong is never right. And now this bit, note-wise, it's very similar to what we did before, but remember the syncopation. So it's one, two. You will agree with me. Sing that for me, please. Second stop. So one, two. You will agree with me. Fabulous. And then from that F sharp, good and loud. Wrong is never just be really careful about those semitones. Sing with me, please. Second stops. Two, three. Wrong is never right. And then. And it will never be. Listen to the pitches there, please. One, two. And you join with the first sopranos at the end for the moral. And it will never be. One, two. And it will. Never be. Fantastic. Let's sing it from the top. Now, again, just to apologise, I'm not a soprano. Occasionally, I can get some of the notes, but this one, I'm afraid, I'd use a bit of digital trickery, so uh, it does sound like the uh, like the chipmunks a little bit, but uh, you will sound much, much nicer singing along with me. Here we go. So there's the notes, basses, second tenors, first tenors, altos, and second sops. Here we go, from the top. And one, two. Wrong is never right. One, two. That is very true. Wrong is never right. And wrong you should not do. One, two. Marvellous. Thank you, Mr. Joplin. And one more part to learn before we can sing the whole thing. Uh, so it's the first Sopranos. And I said, I hope you brought your, your high notes today because, well, it is an opera. We've got everything from the lowest note up to the highest. So with the same words and the same rhythm as the second Sopranos just gave us, we get one, two. Wrong is never right. Okay, so first one, one, two. Remember, the higher you go, the more you drop your jaw so it doesn't get too squeaky. One, two. Wrong is never right. It's a short right, so don't take too long in it. And then one, two. That is very true. It's only down the fourth. I mean, it is Ina Klein and Nach music, isn't it? One, two. That is very true. Fantastic. Over to the next line. Wrong is never right and wrong you should not do. That's a gorgeous tune. So sing that with me, please, first sopranos. One, two, three. Wrong is never right and wrong you should not do. He was a really really cracking composer wasn't he and so we carry on one two wrong is never right one two you will agree with me same notes as in the first section just with that little bit of syncopation and the slightly different uh, words and then from this top a wrong is never right and it will never And I know you've been waiting a long time for this tune, Sops. 
but I think it's worth the wait, isn't it? tune. Let's sing that together and then we can sing it with the recording. One, two, three. Wrong is never right and it will never be. There we go. So let's go back to the beginning. Nope, that's entirely wrong, Ben. Right. <laughs> wrong. Well, wrong is never right except uh, in that case. That was definitely wrong and it's definitely not right. So... From the top, this is the first soprano sing through. Then we'll do the whole thing. And uh, I will leave you to enjoy the rest of your day. Do look up the opera itself. It is a really, really gorgeous, gorgeous piece with a lot of really important messages and a history that I think everyone needs to read up on. So from the top, soprano one, here we go. So basses, tenors, altos. There's your note for sopranos. Here we go. Last but not least, everyone, as we have looked at all eight parts of this, I'm going to balance it all, put it back in that nice opera house acoustic, and we'll sing it all together as a balanced mix. Choose whichever part you like, and I hope this gorgeous little piece by Scott Joplin has brightened your day. It certainly has mine. And I've always loved Joplin's music, but I'm, again, so grateful to Helene for introducing me to this wonderful, wonderful opera. I commend it to you thoroughly. It's a really important piece. And uh, given the gift that uh, Joplin gave us in the 20th century, the least we can do is to listen to the piece he considered to be his best work. So let's sing it. Off we go from the top. those chords I, I will bring today's broadcast to an end and thank you all for joining me I do hope you enjoyed learning that piece join me on fun Friday for something completely different the lion sleeps tonight and then Zadok the priest on Friday evening Saturday evening sing Sunday this week well we're going to enjoy a lovely range of Handel ahead of the coronation which is taking place of course on the 6th of May First of May then is Zadok the Priest and then we have another full week of home choir to look forward to. And just to remind you, next week's uh, wonderful choral alphabet is by Johann Kunau. You can see the card down here. The piece is called Tristis Est Anima Mea. I thoroughly recommend, after you've listened to True Manisha, you go off and you listen to that because that is a stunning piece. I'm so looking forward to recording it and teaching it to you. Remember, next week's choral alphabet will be a long one. It'll be an hour or so, but worth it because I think it could be one that you'll all be clamouring to have as a sing and send. But in the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Thank you for being here. If you're not very well at the moment, I hope you feel much better soon. And uh, once again, super to see you. We'll look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. All the best, folks. Take care. <laughs>